Hey, everybody, welcome to Southside Online today. I want to say a big Merry Christmas to you and to all of those that you love. Thank you for being a part of this day with us, joining us here as we just try to deepen our faith together. Our mission at Southside is simple. We want to build real followers of Jesus Christ, and this is what that looks like. Real followers of Jesus, they know God personally. They find community in biblical, local settings. They grow deeper in their faith through commitment and action steps. And then they continue the great commission of making disciples. We want you to know God, find community, grow deeper, and make disciples. Why? Because we want to make it real easy to go to heaven from right here where we are in Northeast Georgia. So if you're looking for a church home, come be a part of our Hours. You can join us in one of our two locations here at the Redstone Campus in South Jackson or, uh, or at the Commerce Campus at Banks Crossing just outside of Commerce, Georgia. We would love to have you be a part. This Christmas season is simple. We're going to talk about God's amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. One of the most famous hymns ever written in the church, and people, a lot of people will understand and get that first verse of that hymn because we, many of us know it well. But I want you to know today, especially in the Christmas season, that grace has a name. It's not just a word, it's a word that signifies a name. And we see that especially lived out during the Christmas season, the Christ the Son of the living God came to this earth to give himself for you and me as a ransom for our sin. And so people, people today, I think sometimes want to make Christmas a discussion, a debate, an event, all these different kinds of things, but that's not what it is. Christmas is neither a discussion nor a debate. It's not even an event. Actually, Christmas is a person, a person that came and changed the world. And so people, when it comes to God, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got a belief system. Whether you believe in no God and, are, and would classify as an atheist or believe in many versions of God in pluralistic form, or maybe you just believe in the one true God. And even in that, there are all different types of levels and belief systems and, and things like that. Just here's the deal. It's really difficult sometimes to get our mind wrapped around the concept of God, who he is, what he came to do, why believing and following him makes significance in our life. Why is that important? But we're going to find the answer to all of those things today. And I love, I love reading about it through the Gospel of John. If you want to know about the person of Jesus and, and, and who he is and why he's significant, I would tell you go to the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they're all different in their writings because they all wrote to three different people groups. Matthew wrote to the Jews. Mark wrote to the Romans. Luke wrote to the Greeks. But John, John was different. John wrote to the entire world, and all of them wrote to describe Jesus in a certain way to these different types of people. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke all kind of follow the same pattern. They follow the events and the life of Jesus from his birth to his death to his ascension. But John was different. John wrote about the significance of these events. John wrote to the world so that he could show us the real Jesus, the true Son of God. And through Jesus, John writes, who is fully God and fully man, as he, he, he so eloquently describes that in the beginning of his, of, of his letter, of his gospel. Through Jesus, who is fully God and fully man, the glory of God has been given a face that we can see. And we see God through the person of Jesus Christ. And so, Jesus is God made visible. If you've ever wondered, what does God look like? Who is he? What has he came to do? Why is that important in my life? Go to the life of Jesus. Because simply put, Jesus is God made visible. And so, we see that in three things today. Number one, Jesus is God's spoken 
word to us. Jesus is God's spoken word to us. John chapter 1, verse number 1. John goes all the way back to the beginning. To the beginning where? To the beginning of the Garden of Eden? No. He has to go even further back than that. Because if you're sitting there wondering, I'm picturing John sitting at a table writing his gospel beginning. Maybe he's sitting there with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and maybe they're having a nighttime conversation about how to to relay the message of Jesus to a lost world that is in desperate need of a Savior. Maybe they said, you know, here's Mary. Hey, why don't we tell them about the birth of Jesus? I could lay out that process for you and tell you how it happened. John's like, no, no, Matthew did that. Luke Luke's doing that. I, I just, I don't know, well, let's, why don't we start maybe at his ministry where his public ministry became evident. Well, no, that's what Mark's doing. And Peter's helping him do that. And you know, I'm just, I just, me and Peter, we just don't always get along. So let's think about that a little differently. Well, how about Abraham? What if we went all the way back to Abraham? You know, Father Abraham. No? How about the Garden of Eden? See, I think Jesus, maybe this is John, Jesus is bigger than that. Jesus was too big for Bethlehem. He was too big for the garden. He was too big for any one event or place to put him. And John shows us that in the beginning. He says, in the beginning. In what beginning? In the beginning of beginnings of beginnings. Before anything was, there was God. In the beginning was the Word And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, John said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He says, and he was with God in the beginning. The first thing that we see is that Jesus is God's spoken word to us. In other words, this is who Jesus is. If you want to know who God is, look at Jesus because Jesus is God's spoken word to us. In the beginning in Genesis 1, it says that God spoke the world into existence. And here John is saying Jesus is God's spoken word. He is the physical demonstration of the God that you and I serve, the God who created everything. When Jesus left heaven and came to earth and was born in Bethlehem, he went from being an eternal being to now he's both fully God and fully man at the same time. And that had to happen in order for us to be truly forgiven of our sin. And then John says he was with God in the beginning. How does John know this? Because Jesus told him so. When we hear John say the word... What does he mean by that? See, to his Jewish readers, the word was God was blasphemous because John is equating Jesus with God. And so his Jewish readers would say that was blasphemy. To his Greek readers, the word became flesh was absolutely impossible. To John, the word was gospel the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible allows for no place for atheism and no room for doubt about how God became. He's always been. John tells us all things were created through him. Everything. Everything is created through him. The creation story that we see in Genesis 1 and 2, when God took a break on the seventh day, when he rested from his finished work, the creative process, the creative order was finished at the garden on the day of creation, on those six days of creation, it was finished. 
just like Jesus, and then it just keeps reproducing itself over and over and over again. Just like Jesus on a cross when he's looking up into heaven and he's about to breathe his last and he says, it is finished. The redemptive work of man and God because of sin is now finished. It is gone and removed through the person of Jesus Christ. And now he wants to reproduce that over and over and over again through you and through me sharing his story over and over again. John said all things were created through him, and apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. In other words, God made everything. God, John intends for his entire gospel, all 21 chapters of his gospel, to be read through the lens of this verse. And in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and all things were created through Him. And apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. Why? Because Jesus is God's spoken Word to us. You don't need a new Word from God today when you have the Word from God with you every day. And we find it right here on the pages of His Word. Jesus is is God made visible, and so he's God's spoken word to us. Jesus is also God's overcoming word for us. Jesus is God's spoken word to us, and now he's God's overcoming word for us. In verse number four, he says life was in him. Life was in him, and that life was the light of men How do we know that? Because even in the beginning, God spoke light into existence. And the Bible tells us that one day at the end of Revelation, when God makes everything new in the new heaven and the new earth, there will be no need for the sun because the Lord Jesus Christ will shine. God will shine over the world. He'll be the light of the world. Jesus said that in the Gospel of John. He said, I am the light of the world. He who believes in me, trusts in me, walks with me, he won't have to live in darkness because he will have the light of life. Life was in him, and that life was the light of men. Then he says this, and that light shines in the darkness, yet the darkness cannot overcome it. Do you ever feel as though your life is too complex or too difficult for someone to understand? See, the existence of darkness is real. And the goal of darkness is to so envelop the earth completely so that it prevents light from shining and penetrating to the human soul. See, See, the goal of darkness, and all darkness is, darkness is just the absence of light. But darkness's goal, evil's goal in the world is to prevent light from shining. To so envelop our life and our world so that light just can't get in. And it suffocates the human soul. But here's what we learn about the light Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world, that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. See, if Jesus is God made visible to us, then he's God's spoken word to us. But he's also God's overcoming and overwhelming word for us. There is nothing that you and I face that Jesus has not either spoken to or or faced in his own life. Jesus was human just like you and I. He got tired. He got weary. He got angry. He got hungry. He got thirsty. He gave his life and died. He did all of those things. He understood us unlike any other because he lived it. But Jesus was different from us in the fact that he was fully God and fully man. He was sinless. He did no wrong. He had no wrong thoughts, no wrong words, no wrong actions. And he put that life on a cross for you and me. And then he did the unthinkable. He gave it for us, and then he picked it back up again. He did that to show us this, that he is God's overwhelming word 
for anything that you face. Jesus is God's answer for life's darkness, life's despair, life's disappointments, life's depression, life's darkest moments. Jesus is God's answer for. See, God's light and love are greater than any problem that you and I face. If Jesus, if Jesus is God's spoken word to us, and Jesus is God's overwhelming word for us, Jesus is also God's loving word in us. We skip down to verse number 10, and this is what John writes. He, Jesus, was in the world. That's unfathomable to people that God would leave perfection in heaven and come to earth. But he did it. He did it. He was in the world. And the world was created through him. The one who created the world lowered himself to the status of someone in the world. And he came and lived among his creation. There's stories where Jesus would walk by the roadside and he would go to pick some fruit off of a tree that had no fruit on it. And Jesus would curse that tree and it would wither and die on the spot. Jesus was walking into a town and there was a mother bringing a funeral procession out with her son who had died, her only son. She was a widow and now her son was gone. And in that day and time, it meant pure poverty and despair for this lady. And Jesus stopped the funeral possession, and he called that boy back to life and gave him to her mother. Why? Because Jesus, the one who created everything, can do anything in our life. He was in the world, and the world was created through him. Yet the world did not recognize him. <laughs> Would you? I mean, I get it today in the day of Marvel heroes and, and, and the, the superhero movies, maybe the Thors of the world, that, that of the, 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 the outer space that come here and, and, and take over and save us from aliens. Maybe we can kind of somewhat understand it. But even that, even that doesn't come close to what this is. Nobody anticipated God coming to earth, especially in a little town of Bethlehem, especially to a carpenter named Joseph and a, and, a, and a young lady, a young wife named Mary. Nobody anticipated that. Nobody thought for a minute that that baby was too big for Bethlehem. It was a, it was a remote, obscure, dark place in, in the world. And Jesus came there, born in a, in a place among animals, in a place of poverty, God coming to earth, he should have come to the grandest of palaces, to the greatest of kings, to reveal himself not as a child, but as a fully grown savior. That's the way we would anticipate, not like this. That's why the world didn't recognize him. They weren't expecting him that way. He came to his own people, and his own people did not recognize him or receive him. They turned their backs on him. They yelled, crucify him. But, but, but to all who did receive him, to all people who did receive him in all spans of time, he gave them the right he gave them the legal standing. He gave them the adoption papers signed. The right to be children of God. To those who believe in his name. Who were not born or who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man. They were born of the will of God. And that word became flesh and it took up residence among us. We saw it, John said. We observed his glory. The glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Jesus was perfect in all of those things. See, God, John, John kind of ignores 
the amazing stories centered around the birth of Jesus in order to bring us this incredible significance of the person of Jesus, to show us that Jesus Christ is the heart and soul of the gospel. Christianity is not a philosophy. It's a personal relationship with the creator of the world. Jesus created the universe with his word, but to save us, he had to come to earth, give his life, and hang on a cross. At the very end of John's gospel, after everything is said and done, after he's recounted all of the life of Jesus and the significance behind everything that he gave us, John wrote these words. He said, but these things are written to you so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed one from heaven, the one sent from heaven to save you from your sin, the Son of God. And that by believing, you might have life in his name. See, I believe this. I believe that Jesus is God's answer for any and everything that you could possibly need today. All you simply have to do is ask. Call on his name and ask him to be your Savior, your God, your Lord, your King your word for this day. Jesus is God's spoken word to you. He's God's overwhelming word for you so that he can be God's living, loving word in you. I'd love to pray with you today. Ask God to meet you where you are and the needs that you have. I would begin with this and say this. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you know him personally? Have you ever invited him into your life to forgive you of your sin and to live fully inside of you? If not, let me take a moment and introduce him to you today. Would you just simply pray these words with me, believing them in your heart? Would you say, Father God, I believe in you. And I believe that you love me so much that you sent your son to be my savior. Say to Jesus, Jesus, I believe in you. And today I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to forgive me for my sin by your grace. Restore me to you. Say these words to him. Say, Jesus, be the Savior and Lord of my life. I'm ready today. I'm ready to follow you and I say yes to you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today, being a part of this day with us. Listen, if you prayed with us today, please let us know in the comment section today. Follow the links at the end of the video. Let us know that you said yes. Let us help you begin a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas to you. I hope to see you next week.